there's this whole idea of getting into normal, right? Let's get back to normal. Let's let's get back to normal life, uh, essentially. Everybody wants to get back to doing, you know, the things that they normally would do in a, in a situation, uh, like after a crisis. And I think, um, to me, you know, this notion of going back to normal um, isn't really going to help us out. Uh, and, and I say that because what normal was wasn't really working for a lot of us. And it's always like these pro-Western civilization, pro-capitalist people that like to deviate the argument away, um, you know, not really engaging the root cause of what the discussion really is, right? You, you know, so if the, if, the, if the problem is that, that there's a large chunk of people in the middle and, and low-income communities that aren't able to participate in this economic system that we've set up for ourselves and that the economic system isn't really even set up for them, to participate in it, you know, the argument ends up being, well, look at this group of people that were able to do it and this group of people. So, you know, something's wrong with you, not this system. And if you pay attention to history, if you pay attention to how things have worked for 200, 300 years, um, it is a system, a systematic problem. Um, you know, the, the core of it is still the same. The foundation of it is still the same. It's built in greed. It's built in unfairness. It's built in, uh, you know, excess. It's built in stomping over your neighbor's throat to get one step ahead. And if you don't do that, something's wrong with you. You're the one failing, not the system, right? When, when, what, what the argument, you know, that myself and a lot of other people are saying is we need a new system that doesn't encourage that kind of behavior, that doesn't encourage this overwhelming level of poverty and claiming that we're living in the greatest country in the whole world. Um, and really the, it's, it's going to come down to who determines what this new normal is, right? When we get out of this thing, are we going to go back to business as usual? Are we going to go back to this economy? Are we going to go back to the way things were, or are we going to create something better? Now, people, um, like Neil, uh, Kashkari, uh, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that properly or not, but he's the Minneapolis president of the Fed, um, you know, he basically says that right now we are, um, we're looking at an 18 month track for social distancing. So that means that we are not going to get out of this until September of 2021. That's what, that's, that's his estimate. And, uh, and they're not looking, they're not really interested in being like, okay, if that is the way that things are going to be, what are we going to do to adjust things so that, you know, people are taken care of so people can still pay their rents, their mortgages, um, or, or have, you know, some kind of money to, to do that sort of stuff, right? Or have, have a level of income to do that sort of stuff. So, um, you know, the reason why that's scary is because of this. Um, right now, this article comes to us from the Daily Mail, uh, which I'm not, I, I can't, some people say it's conservative, some people say it's not, I, I don't really know, but this is, this is basically what they've reported here. Uh, in the last three weeks, the U.S. has suffered an excess of 16 million job losses, equivalent to nearly 10% of the nation's workforce. Um. And uh, as of Sunday night, there's over 22,000 uh, deaths from the coronavirus, and they're saying that the, the death toll can go up to 200,000 over the summer if uh, the stay-at-home orders uh, keep American indoors are lifted. So if, they're basically saying if, if, if we lift the stay-at-home order, things are going to get worse. Things are going to... We're, we're going to go from 22 to 200,000. Now... Um, there is also the notion that if we do end up staying at home for as long as we do, and you know the um, the American healthcare system is not able to function the way that well, it doesn't really function very well to begin with, considering that you know there's hundreds and hundreds and millions of people that have health insurance, but you know when they go into the doctor, it's like they can't afford shit, 
it's like okay cool like we still have we st we're, we're still r riddled in medical debt even though we have uh, you know something from the american care act or even from what what is deemed as trump care right even if you have health insurance it doesn't guarantee that um you are not uh you are not going to be riddled and sacked with this immense amount of debt um so that's the argument that they're making there is but if we go back to opening up these small businesses so people can afford what they have people can afford uh to go live their lives and support these small businesses and so on and so forth um the number of people dying is going to increase and maybe it will maybe it won't i'm not i'm not sure i honestly don't know because one of the things this neil kashkari uh, gentleman keeps saying is well no one knows how this virus works no one knows how this thing is really operating here so it's difficult for us to predict the course of this thing and you know whose fault is that it's 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 the fault of a system that doesn't you know particularly uh listen to what scientists have to say uh or particularly um you know listens to logic and reason it is more driven by greed it's more driven by who's going to who's going to validate the arguments of uh, corporations and big businesses than it is anything else. There's records and evidence. Um, I mean, scientists have been claiming that there's going to be some kind of global scale pandemic for years now, for years. And no one really decided that, okay, maybe we should listen to what these scientists are saying and maybe we should put some, um, you know, put some plans in place um, that will uh, particularly make sure that if we need to go into um, more restrictive measures that people will be taken care of. Well, you know, the, the current system, the, the status quo system, decided that that's not important. What we need to do is make sure that the markets don't fail. That's what we need to do. We need to make sure that people are still, you know, people are still fighting each other. Income disparity is still at an all-time high. Um, you know, education is still on a systematic level controlled by the state, controlled by, you know, controlled by what we want the narratives to be, you know, all this shit. And, and that's that's the system that dictated what what we need to do and this is and this is why we're here and everybody can sit there and say oh well trump 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 you know trump got rid of the pandemic uh, planning committee well trump didn't do that in italy trump didn't do that in the uk trump didn't do that in korea he did that in the states and the states arguably is probably worse off on a systematic level than a lot of other countries but that doesn't mean that other countries aren't dealing with this in in their own particular way they're that they're not dealing with some similar challenges than we are um and you know one of the things and and this is and this is where the where the difference comes in that this this neil guy talks about right is uh, by the way, the Fed, if you don't know what the Fed is, they're basically like the keepers of the American currency. They, they basically delve out money. They delve out the currency. They, you know, that's kind of what they do. They're a private company. They're a corporation that prints money. Um, and then they sell money. You know, they monetize money. They put a dollar value on the dollar. Go ahead and wrap your mind around that insanity. So this Mr. Mr. Uh, Kashkari, the, the president of the Minneapolis uh, Fed, has basically come out and say, well, he's really worried um, that, you know, going forward, people are not going to be able to pay their mortgages, uh, the, the, that people are not going to be able to pay their, um, their uh, you know, debts uh, to uh, the banks. And, you know, what that's going to do and people are not going to be able to pay their rents and the landlords are not going to have enough money to put money back into the bank, who, you know, the, to the to the loans they took out against for their buildings and things of that sort. And, you know, what do you what do we do then? If, if the banks aren't getting enough money, then what then then what then what do we do? What What's going to happen? So we're going to have to fortify the banks. That's what he keeps talking about when it comes down to it. We have to fortify the banks. The banks need to be fortified and um you know that's that's sort of the thing that that we have to do and it's just like well what what about the people what about the people the people are the ones that are in trouble here the people are the ones that that you know what it's really proving is that on a foundational level the people are the ones that run the economy 
and you brought the people to a standstill because they can't go out and spend money on the things that they need to spend into. Small businesses aren't getting help in this situation. And that's what that's so. So he points that out, too. Right. So we'll go back to this is um, Kashkari said uh, additional support was needed for small businesses beyond the three hundred and fifty billion dollars provided in the coronavirus aid package passed in March. But he was optimistic that Congress would approve more funding to keep businesses from folding under the strain of social distancing measures. When when the fuck when 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 have they done that? What, the, what, what, what historical evidence is there that when it comes down to it, Congress will be like, you know what we really need to do is help out the American people. What, when the fuck has that happened? In 08, that didn't happen. In 08, people were like, we're going to fucking lose our homes. And they're like, I know, but the banks will be OK, though. So you can go back and start the whole process again. You know, the fucking problem that created the crisis in 08, we're just going to cre- recreate it. We're just it's that. But isn't that exciting? Isn't that exciting that we're going to recreate it for everybody? Right? And he goes, but then again, we don't know if this support is going to be long enough uh, because if we need to have different phases of shutdown for the next several months or until we have a therapy or vaccine, we're going to need more help than that. So this is a Face the Nation interview is what they're quoting here. And um, he keeps bringing up this notion of... um, uh, of therapy, which is, which, you know, is basically just this notion, like, therapy for what? Like, what are you talking about? Like, gene therapy? Like, therapy from what? I don't understand this notion of therapy. Or vaccine. So that's the other, but the vaccine is, again, it's like 18 months away. The behavior of this virus is changing. There, there is a very small study uh, that has come out to say that there might be three different strains of this vaccine or I'm sorry, the, the virus. And, you know, so, um, you know, all this stuff is very confusing. And, and this is the part that blows my mind. He goes, meanwhile, the Federal Reserve is being aggressive in its approach to softening the blow of the pandemic's impact. Uh, Kashkari said, with the central bank announcing a number of new programs last week, lending as much as $2.3 trillion to businesses and governments. Yeah, it, 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 that's what we need. The Fed needs to be more aggressive in how it, it helps banks. That's what we need. His argument was that uh, the Fed has to keep an eye on the banks because, uh, you know, he needs to for- they need to fortify them more aggressively than they did in 2008 because um, that was the problem in 2008 is that they didn't create enough poor people uh, by bailing out money, uh, by giving more bailout checks to the banks that created the problem in the first place. That was the problem. That was the problem. And part of that problem was that, you know, we hit that crisis in 08. Things got really bad. And there was a lot of this blame game thrown around. And then we went back to business as usual, where we didn't pay attention to any of this stuff. And that's what they're trying to do. They're trying to remind us and gaslight us. Uh, If you're not familiar with gaslighting, it's basically when uh, somebody says something like, uh, you know, it's like when a person will, will actively do something terrible in front of you and you go, wait a minute, what the fuck did you just do? And they're like, I didn't do anything like that. And then they'll, they'll spin their, they'll continue to, to spin and spin and be like, no, I, I'm pretty sure I witnessed there's camera. No, 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 it's not, a, it's not me. You know, they kind of, it's basically like this masterful form of lying, um, that's meant to, uh, confuse the, person accusing the other person of lying it's it's this sort of psychological torture tactic is essentially kind of what it is and that's what they're going to do they're going to keep claiming that we need to go back to that level of complacency where people aren't paying attention to politics and people used to get mad at me all the time for talking about political stuff um and you know and and you know talking about like labor movements or whatever bring up labor movements because that's what I've been talking about and it's kind of on the forefront of my mind here but people just get mad at me all the time you know like I don't get work at comedy clubs because of the stuff I talk about uh, there are certain venues that don't you know um 
that that don't book me because it's the stuff that I talk about. There are certain comedians that don't like me because of the stuff I talk about. They consider me not to be a comedian because of that, you know, like, so, but, and and they basically go like, why don't you just, you know, kind of just be the distraction. That's what you should be. You should just be the distraction. They play in the commercials. There's uh, this, this, this huge fawning over like celebrity culture and trivialities and, um, you know, this huge championing of like uh, anti-intellectualism that you can't be smart that you can't be in the know that you can't be on the pulse of things and and that's encouraged it's encouraged to be ignorant and and that's the that's the normal that they want to get back get get you back to is um is that level of complacency that level of uh, that level of hubris and and anti-intellectualism and um, just disconnect with what's actually happening. This stuff affects your daily life. And this is what's important. This is why people talk about this all the time. Market shares, market, that has nothing to do with your daily life. But banks getting more money than you so that they're fortified makes absolutely no fucking sense. Why would you not fortify your foundation and we are the foundation, right? Because we have to pay the banks back. So why would you just funnel money at the top and not at your foundation? When you build, when you build a building, when you put a, a, a building together, you don't start with the penthouse and work your way down. That's fucking crazy. What are you going to build the penthouse on? You need a foundation to work off of. Well, we are the foundation. So why is a government structure not fucking helping the foundation, economically speaking? What Americans have to accept is that really what, what has happened um, and the culture is built around this and the history is built around this is that we've been gaslit. We've been gaslit by, by, these, by the people that control the Fed by the, and the Fed controls the government and the Fed controls the, this so-called economy and we've been gaslit by them. We've been driven to this overwhelming fear-driven fucking trivial distracted lifestyle and that's gone that's done i don't think we have the luxury of doing that anymore i don't think we have the luxury of just kind of you know closing our eyes and holding our hands in the air and hoping that jesus or the government is going to is going to drive this country into a direction that it needs to be driven in which if they do that it will be off a fucking cliff because you have taken the wheels we as a people have taken the wheels off of the direction that this country is going to go and the car and the vehicle that is this country in this weird metaphor is going to wear off the road and fly off of a cliff and that's what's happening right now so the less people pay attention to this shit and the less people actually understand all this and the less people are actually connected to this the easier it is going to be for the system to collapse everything so now we have to make a choice. Is that normal is gone? That triviality, distracted, complacent normal is gone. And what we have to do is use our intellect, is actually think about things, is learn how to, how to form arguments, learn how to communicate with each other, look at a different model um, of living our lives, right? We're going to have to choose intellect over hubris. Uh, and that's understanding that perhaps something is wrong. You know, your nationalism is not really going to help you out here. Claiming that America is great, we're the best, greatest country in the whole world, doesn't fucking help the economy start back up. Doesn't really help figure out a cure for this virus. Doesn't really fi help figure out what is the most effective way of contending with this problem is it herd immunity okay if it is what what's the plan how are we going to implement that how are we going to organize a bunch of people to implement that right hubris doesn't do that the new normal is either going to be determined by we the people or the oligarchs that's what it's going to boil down to who's going to control this new normal right uh, so our new normal is, uh, I think, what, what I think we're mutually trying to work towards. If, if we the people have um, 
my th- this is sort of what my view is on on what our new normal the we the people's new normal would be is a collective ed- effort to ensure individual rights are respected and an economic economy of compassion trust and understanding using intellect logic and emotional understanding to advance technology ethically for societal uh, benefit that's what i think we want to go for you know, we want to create an economy that understands that, hey, sometimes you're going to go through a rough time. And when you do, it's, you know, we're not going to sit there and blame you and sit there and yell things like pull yourself up by your bootstraps or any of that kind of nonsense. We're going to sit, we're going to be here for you and, and say, look, you're going through a tough time and that's OK. Uh, we got your back while, while you while you get get, you know, uh, back up on your feet. We'll, we'll help you out a little bit. We'll cut you some slack. You know, this sucks. This sucks. We understand that. Um, if we're going to use technology, we're, we're going to make sure that the technology is used ethically and efficiently. Uh, we're not going to use it to arbitrarily spy on people. We're not going to use it to, you know, uh, t- turn great amounts of profit for one person up at the top. We're, we're going to try to make sure that the entire society, um, if they choose to, can actually use it for their own, for, for, for benefiting themselves, for, for mutual benefit and, and make sure that it's not, you know, creating more problems than it's solving. The oligarchical new normal uh, is essentially a surveillance state of fear based on con- uh, on contact tracing, continuing to d- uh, distract the people with shiny new poisons to create an authoritarian state with, com- you know, a whole populace of complacent people that will walk right into it and create an economy on uh, competition and subservience. That's, I think, what the the oligarchs want. What they want is to use, we talked about this yesterday with what Snowden is talking about by using apps and telecommunications um, to do contact tracing to, to find out who has been in contact with anybody that tested positive. And the problem with that is, first of all, you're going to actually have to test people, right? And, you're, and you can't force people to take a test that they can't afford. That's unethical. But this system doesn't care. It cares about profit. So it doesn't care about bringing you tests. It cares about forcing you into it. And a bunch of people are going to sit there and be like, well, you should get tested. You should figure out who's got it. It doesn't matter what it costs. It doesn't matter. Well, you should fucking do that. And that's, and that's us blindly walking into authoritarianism by, by saying, well, of course these people should be getting tested it doesn't matter what the cost of it is. Well, it does matter what the cost of it is, because if they can't afford, if they, if it's between getting tested and putting food on their child's plate, I'm pretty sure I know which one most people are gonna choose. So, which one sounds better? Our new normal, of creating a new world, of of looking at at, at the failures of this system that brought us here or to go back into a worse version of what was status quo and and walking right into it walking right into authoritarianism i'll give you a second here's what i think is uh, uh, I, f- I forgot about this part uh this is what I think is, is probably going to happen with the economy if we are on this Neil guy's, uh, in, you know, 18-month track is this. Um, I'm not an economist. This is just sort of my rough prediction is things were oh, plateaued and then they kind of went up and then they started going on this decline. So we're right there. We're in the middle of this decline, right? And then I think... Once we hit May, there's going to be just a sharp decline, and it's going to keep going, and it's going to keep going. Things are going to get worse, a lot more unemployment. It'll probably taper out for a little bit uh, over the summer when things start to look better, and then it'll start to come back up, and by the time we hit fall and winter again, we'll have to go back into another lockdown situation where businesses that are, are basically going to be screwed again, and they're going to be given an opportunity to take out loans, which is just going to is going to do what? It's not going to funnel money into the banks. People aren't going to be able to pay off loans, so why would they take loans? And you know, it'll dip us back again. We'll kind of play. So it's just there. It'll it'll. You're never going to see an economy that's actually like 
going to work in this model. It's just not a, a long-term solution. Um, you know, people and people are not going to be okay with this. People are not going to be okay with being cooped up inside, uh, not being able to, um, you know, uh, have a purpose and have a meaning and contribute to the world and contribute to their society in any which way. They're just not going to be able to sit there and do it. So really what needs to be done is creating a new normal. And that new normal, in my opinion, uh, is going to come from what we want. This collective idea. This idea that isn't driven on profit and and competition and you know stepping over your your neighbor to get one step ahead, it's not going to come from that. It's gonna we're all gonna have to pay a lot more attention. <laughs> you know, like when when we're surprised of like how are they doing all this? Well, they've been doing it for thirty years, um, and thirty years of economic history has brought us to you know, this fucking nightmare scenario that we're all dealing with. So maybe we should start paying a little bit more attention. Maybe we should start going beyond the corporate media narratives. Maybe we should, you know, take the corporate media for face value and then and then go listen to some alternative independent journalists that aren't funded uh, by, you know, Boeing and Raytheon and Goldman Sachs and J.P. Morgan Chase, all these people that have no no fucking interest in helping out the common man. What they do have an interest in is 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 taking every ounce of money um, and funneling it to the top and hoarding it all for themselves, and then you know kind of sprinkling it back down, and being like, "This is enough for you poor's to 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 not revolt, right? This is we're good. You're good. You're fucking good." Thank you so much for checking out this video. If you enjoyed this content, please give it a like and a subscribe and a share. Share it out with your friends, your enemies, whoever you think would enjoy content like this. I'm going to be putting out videos like this every single day, so make sure you are subscribed to the channel uh, and make sure you hit that bell so you get all the alerts from all the videos that I put out there. Uh, and, uh, and if you, if you have the means to, uh, please consider making a, a donation. I know we are all in tough times, but if you, if you can, uh, you can become a sustaining member or make a one-time donation at ramennoodlescomedy.com slash donate. You can check out various different ways of becoming a sustaining member or just make a one-time donation. Uh, while you're on my website, you can also check out all of my past comedy albums, which are available on all of your favorite streaming and um, downloading websites, if that's, that's, if that's a way that you can you say that. Uh, <laughs> but they're also available on Bandcamp, which uh, right now is giving the most back to artists. Uh, but also on my Bandcamp, they are all available for a pay what you want. If you would like to enjoy some live stand-up comedy albums from me and you don't have the means, if you're in tough times, that's totally fine. You can download it for free. Go ahead and get it for free and enjoy it. Uh, or if you do, and if you want somebody else to enjoy it, you can get it to them as a gift. Uh, that's also a, a recommended thing. Uh, but most importantly, thank you guys for tuning into this video. Um, thank you guys for, for all the people that have already donated, that have already become patrons. I really appreciate it. You guys are amazing. And uh, until the next video, we'll see you on the road. Thank you, guys.